Welcome to the second part of this wonderful anime. If you haven't seen the first part, watch it through the link in the description and then stay with me until the end of this video. As we saw in the previous part, after Ataru took off Lum's underwear, she fell in love with him and their quarrel started. So, to the continue of the story a new character named Shutaro shows up. Shutaro's grandfather gets on a plane to escort his grandson to school. He goes to school with a private plane and eight planes for escort. Shutaro jumps out of the plane and describes skydiving as his first job. At this moment, Miyake is very jealous because Lum is clinging to Ataru. She picks up a chair and hits it at Ataru but the chair flies into Shutaro's parachute and he hangs awkwardly in the tree. Fortunately, his body is flexible and he gets out of trouble easily, but the whole school is shocked by the transfer student who parachuted to school, and the teacher blames him for causing such a mess. Shutaro doesn't answer and his attention is drawn to Miyake. Miyake regrets throwing the table, but Shutaro has always been trained to be very kind to girls. A few words of praise to Miyake made her heart beat faster. At this moment, when Ataru tries to stop Miyake from obsessing over Shutaro, she punches him in the face. So on the first day of school, Shutaro already gained high popularity as a transfer student. It is easy to say that boys envy him and girls admire him. Shutaro's next scene sees Ataru harassing Miyake, so he stands up to stop this rude behavior. Ataru explains that Miyake is his girlfriend, and before he can finish the sentence, he is electrocuted by the jealous Lum. Shutaro didn't expect Ataru who looks so ordinary to have a beautiful alien wife. He tries to convince Lum to break up with Ataru as soon as possible but Lum ignores him and flies to a tree to sleep. Shutaro continues his performance of showing off, and takes the initiative to nominate himself when selecting the monitor. Shutaro also publishes the laws he plans to implement once he takes office. For example, people who want to leave early use a lie detector and stick out their tongue when a detector detects that they are lying. He also sends the Menda family's private police to monitor the students and kill those who are lazy and don't go to school. In the end, he arrests all the people who come late to school and locks them up. Shutaro concludes by pointing out that these cruel punishments only work for boys, and that girls should not suffer but be admired. Of course the boys disagree after hearing this, they are the ones most likely to come late and leave early or miss school. So all the boys turn their attention to Ataru, thinking that only this reckless man can stand to compete with Shutaro. Ataru stands up for the election when everyone is sobbing. In his speech, he says only one thing, once he is elected monitor the whole class of girls would belong to him. Ataru is supposed to lose for sure but on this special occasion all the boys vote for him. The rivalry between Ataru and Shutaro unexpectedly ends in a draw. Shutaro is reluctant to see the result and suggests another match. The Mendu family has a dueling method that has been passed down from generation to generation, where apples are placed on the heads of both parties of the game, and whoever breaks the apples with a cannon wins. Ataru is completely shocked that Shutaro's ancestors could survive such a dangerous dueling style. Shutaro doesn't care about Ataru's doubts, he's ready to throw the white gloves at Ataru before the duel, according to Western customs. But Ataru uses a super fast dodge and the most exaggerated part is that Ataru also uses ninjutsu that can confuse the enemy. So it takes a long time for Shutaro to block Ataru on the roof. The accident happens at this time as Lum comes to find Ataru, she encounters a white glove, so Ataru lies to Lum that Shutaro wants her to duel. Lum has a very strong sense of victory and knocks Shutaro to the ground, at which point the classmates give chase and Ataru lies that he defeated Shutaro. Proud Shutaro felt that he had humiliated his family and apologized by almost killing himself. While Ataru kept repeating the same sentence on the sidelines saying that all the girls in the class belonged to him. After returning home, Shutaro couldn't calm down. He can't think of Lum having a hot personality like her body. Next day when Shutaro goes back to school, the parachute covers Lum. Meanwhile, Ataru has just confirmed Miyake's feelings and she likes the handsome and rich Shutaro. Ataru reminds Miyake to cherish her infatuated lover, but suddenly the parachute falls and covers the four of them. Miyake and Shutaro are very happy after their close interaction, which makes Ataru very disappointed. Shutaro is also disappointed because the girl he has feelings for is all about Ataru. Shortly after, the school organized extramural teaching. Lum, who changes into human clothes, seems much kinder, but unfortunately, 
Adaru is still not interested in her. When it's time to explore freely, the four decide to adventure together in a nearby stalactite cave. Everyone has their own thoughts. Miyake's goal is to be with Shutaro while Shutaro plans to use this opportunity to improve his relationship with Lum. On the other hand Lum just knows that wherever Adaru goes she goes. And Adaru only wants to join this adventure because he wants to strengthen his relationship with Miyake. As soon as the adventure begins, they encounter a fork in the road. Shutaro turns off his flashlight and pretends the flashlight is dead. So they end up losing their way and shouting. Miyake hugs Shutaro tightly and Lum clings to Adaru. They must gather together and continue exploring the depths of the cave. Shutaro and Adaru agree that the next time they run apart, they should hug the right person. Once again they hit a fork in the road and Shutaro quickly turns off the flashlight and they separate again. This time Shutaro is unluckier, as the person hugging him turns out to be Adaru. Shutaro suddenly shows his weak side. It turns out that he suffers from both dark phobia and claustrophobia. He is not susceptible to illness as long as the girls are watching him. Lum and Miyake arrive and Shutaro's abnormal symptoms disappear. Adaru goes with another experiment and finds that as long as he covers the girl's eyes, Shutaro immediately cries. Everyone tries to go back the same way but they get lost and the flashlight goes out. Lum accidentally activates a spaceship hidden in a cave while using electric lighting. The spaceship crashes in the cave and flies into outer space. Soon after, four crows appear carrying a spaceship, with the eldest of the crows leading the way. They are aliens like Lum who come to Earth because of a secret mission. At this moment, the main characters are playing tennis on a nearby tennis court, and four of them make a move to impress their crush. Lum suspends herself in the air to break the ball. And at the end, the ball is hit so hard that it knocks one of the crows to the ground. The spaceship loses its footing and slides straight down the hill, and the next moment Shutaro is crushed to the ground by it. Adaru hits the crap out of the beautiful alien girl on the ship when he sees her, and even Shutaro is attracted to the girl. Then the four crows fly away screaming, but rich Shutaro misunderstands that crows can talk in the world of the poor. At this time, the elder of the crows wakes up and tells the reason for coming to Earth. There are no humanoid males in the Elders of Crowland, and they want to help Princess Karama find a handsome boy to breed with. Crows also promise that the male is not responsible for everything else, but only for intimate interaction. The crows think Shutaro qualifies because he's cute so they let him wake up the sleeping Karama with a kiss. Suddenly Miyake tries to kidnap Shutaro because she is strongly opposed to Shutaro kissing another woman. Lum on the other hand stops Adaru as he tries to sneak up to kiss Karama. She underestimates Adaru's penchant for pretty girls, so he jumps hard and ends up kissing Karama. Time seems to stand still, no one can believe the scene in front of them. Then the elder of the crows tells everyone that according to tradition, the princess must have an intimate interaction with the man who kisses her and this part ends here. Thanks for watching until the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next videos.